So what's up guys, we're back here at reacting to fights and today we're gonna do something different. So we're not gonna watch my fights. Now we're gonna watch some of my favorite fights. So today we're gonna be watching a classic, you know, uh, fight for whoever enjoys K1. I have always been a big fan. I started, you know, karate when I was a little kid because of my mom. Then at 15, that's when I really started training with the mindset, you know, to turn this into a competitive thing and, and eventually have a career in fighting. And I started Muay Thai and kickboxing when I was 15 years old. And I loved to watch K1. I always thought it was, you know, one of the, I don't know, most, uh, to this day, you know, I think it's the most inter entertaining uh, fight sport there is for me. You know, I love striking, so I think it's just exciting to see these guys, you know, trading kicks, punches, and, and, and the whole movement. So, yeah, we're gonna watch a classical fight, Ernesto, Ernesto Hoost against Jerome LeBanner. And that was in the K1 19, 1999 final. So that was the final fight. K1, how did it work? It, were, it was a GP. So every year we had like many, many, uh, many kind of editions that were cl classifying the fighters for the final event. And the final event for you to be a champion, you had to have three fights in the same night. So you won the first fight, you went to the second one, beat the second uh, opponent, go to the third fight, and that's the final. So these guys got to the final fight with a lot of, you know, damage, a lot of, uh, depending on the fight, how they went, you know, they, they were tired and everything. So they, it was, it was a very interesting format. And for me, maybe, you know, the, the toughest uh, way to, to prove yourself as a fighter. So let's enjoy it. Let's check it out. Channel, ch channel, channel, baby, channel, channel, ch channel. So this has always been one of also my, my, one of the parts that I always thought was really interesting is how uh, the entrances were. Both Pride and K1, they had awesome kind of, you know, entrances, a lot of lights. The crowd, you know, got excited with all of this and, and they really put a lot of, into that. Look, you have some lasers. I can't imagine how it would be today, you know, with all the technology we have now, it would, it would be even more awesome. But yeah, K1, was my dream as, as a little kid. When I was 15 years old, 16, I wanted to be a K1 fighter. I wanted to be a kickboxer. But at this time, they only had two divisions. So heavyweight, you can see these guys, they're they are like, I don't know, 240, 250. So I could never, you know, be a heavyweight. And the other division they had was 155. So under 155, that also was too low for me. So I, I that's why, Later on, I realized that I should go to MMA and, and just started training jiu-jitsu and, and focused my energy in, on MMA. But I've always been a big fan of kickboxing. So that's Le Banner. Le Banner uh, is, is, if I'm not mistaken, he's a French uh, fighter. And, you know, he's more of a aggressive pressure fighter. He has really good technique, high guard, but his, his big thing is his body, you know, he's a really powerful guy, really strong guy. So he always looked to kind of uh, pressure his opponents and try to beat him, beat them with his power, with his strength and look to just overwhelm his opponents. And he was going to be fighting Ernesto Hoost, for, who for me is, you know, maybe I, I believe he's the best uh, kickboxer of all time. Ernesto is just amazing, you know, so technical. He is not a very big heavyweight. He's tall, but he's kind of lengthy, not that heavy. So he was able always to move really well, use his technique, you know, a really technical guy and, and a guy that has always kind of favored uh, technique and speed than power. You know, he, he never was a guy that looked only for one big shot. He always took it, took his time, studied his opponent and connected good shots, clean shots. And usually he would break the guy little by little during the fight and eventually finish his opponents. So yeah, fight against two, two legends and let's rush, let's pass it a little bit. So there we have Ernesto Hoost walking in, legend. Ernesto is Dutch, so he's from Holland. 
Funny story is I, I've actually, you know, uh, messaged Ernesto a few times. He has messaged me as well. He is uh, very good friends with my striking coach and my, you know, my longtime coach, Henry Hooft, who has, you know, uh, introduced me to Ernesto. I remember in one of my fights, uh, Ernesto sent him a video message, you know, talking about my fight, sending me good energy, good motivation. And that has always, uh, b that was very special for me, you know, because I'm, I'm a fan of these guys. I'm a fan of Ernesto, and I think he's, a, he's definitely the best fighter uh, of kickboxing of all time. And to get a message from a guy like this, it was a big deal for me. It's, it's a big deal to this day. So here we have uh, an Ernesto representing Holland, Levaner representing Fran France, and let's speed forward for what matters, the fight. So you see two big guys, and there the fight starts. So there you can see clearly uh, you got Levaner putting on the pressure very heavy with the boxing so he was a you know he focused a lot on boxing but in kickboxing everybody has to kick so so you know the, the name already says it's kicking and boxing so uh the guys always mix it up but he's a really pressure fighter and you can see look he's he's pressuring looking for the big shots and big combinations but if you observe right there that was a good one he he timed i'm gonna pause it right there there if you observe he times Ernesto's kick, so Ernesto th throws the, the low kick and he catches Ernesto with a straight right. And that's something really common, you know, in kickboxing, we try to time sometimes uh, kicks or even punches and be able to kind of counter attack that at the same time. So that was really, really well done by, by Lebanner over there. But if you watch, this is a really tricky style to fight. When you fight guys like Lebanner, sometimes you, you better kind of let him waste his, his initial energy and his initial, you know, aggressiveness. Because if Ernesto tries to get into a brawl, get into a firefight right here, he might get caught. And this is what Lebanner does all the time. He's used to this. So I think Ernesto is doing really good by just covering up trying to put one shot or another shot but always looking for the for the safety you know he do, just doesn't want to go out there and risk everything but you see ernesto is having a hard time on on finding his rhythm right there again so they got close enough to kind of clinch and ernesto left up finished up with a low kick that's really good it doesn't again he does it again another low kick that doesn't look like much, but when you have a three-round fight or even a five-round fight, this counts over, you know, when you go one, two, three, ten low kicks. That starts slowing the opponent down, and that's what Ernesto is doing, you know. He's focusing on his defense, on his guard, because Lebanon has really hard shots. He doesn't want to get knocked out or, or, or knocked down, and capitalizing on the low kicks. So maybe, you know, further down the fight, you know, second round, third round, he could start, you know, paying dividends and, and then he starts uh, growing in the fight. But we can see this round, Ernesto, again, having a hard time finding his distance. But little by little, you can see Lebanon slowing down a little bit. So he started. Now we have less than a minute to go. And Ernesto started off feeling the pressure a lot. Lebanon was walking him down, putting on a lot of shots, a lot of combinations and not really uh, being so, let's say, so technical and so, like he wasn't kind of putting some feints or anything like that. He was just straightforward, throwing a lot of pressure. And now in the end of this first round, he's already a little bit tired. And what happened? Ernesto has survived. Ernesto has little by little put his low kicks, survived the round. And yeah, the round is finishing. Nothing too crazy got, you know, that, that connected on Ernesto. And overall, end of the round for me, LeBanner took this round clearly, but uh, he didn't do any big damage. You know, he connected a lot. Most of the shots were in the guard. Some of them, Ernesto was able to move. 
And little by little, I could see Ernesto, you know, finding his distance, connecting some punches, nothing big, nothing crazy, connecting some good low kicks. And that's going to count, you know, down the line if, if the fight, you know, goes, out, goes on for a long time. And that's what kickboxing is about. You know, it's, you don't have so many tools like MMA. You don't have takedowns. You don't have uh, long clinching. You cannot put the guy in the fence and try to control him. So you always have to be really aware of, of your defense, uh, aware of counters where you can capitalize. If you see right there, look. There, uh, big combination by LeBanner, but good, good guard defense by Ernesto, and he connected a, a good low kick. And if you see, look, he missed a shot right there. So you, you see a really high guard by Ernesto, and while he has a high guard, he still has a little bit of vision in between his arms. And that's where he tries to, you know, get some body movement to avoid punches. So he's at the same time blocking and moving out of the way. So he doesn't get, you know, uh, if, if a, a shot connects, it's not going to be a full clean shot. So he's going to be able to just, you know, survive that shot and keep on fighting. And then you see nothing major connects. Definitely, that's count, that, th these are positive points for LeBanner, but nothing that is going to cause a lot of damage in Ernesto. Now, these kicks, little by little, they go adding up, and they're landing. They're landing on the leg. So that's definitely going to be something that, that little by little is going gonna, is gonna to cause damage. There we see another big combination. Good body shots. Those were, those were clean body shots. And yeah, so first round, LeBanner, but I don't think he hurt Ernesto very much. And Ernesto kind of little by little started finding the distance. And the kind of pace that LeBanner puts, it's hard to keep on, you know, for the whole fight. So there we see a slower start for the second round. And there, look, let me put that back. That was a great shot. So in the first round, we saw a low kick by uh, Ernesto be countered uh, at the same time by a, by a straight hand from LeBanner. And now in the second round, we see the same thing, but the other way around. So uh, LeBanner, a little bit tired, throws a sloppy kick, and you see straight uh, right from, from, not Ernesto, my bad, LeBanner throws a sloppy kick, and then you see Ernesto who's throw a, a good straight right to the chin and, and hurt LeBanner. So that was perfectly timed. A sloppy kick with a low hand. So after he kicked, he dropped this hand. That's a common mistake. Most kickboxers do it, and we gotta, you know, correct. Especially when we're tired, that's something that that we end up doing. And when a guy like Ernesto, really technical, sees that opportunity, he takes it. And there, look, he just keeps on, keeps on connecting big shots. Right here, Ernesto sees the opportunity, and, and he goes, yeah, that's it. So big shots. If you realize, once Ernesto hurt uh, LeBanner, he just went for the kill. And LeBanner, being an aggressive fighter, being a guy that, that is willing to trade, even though he was hurt, he didn't move back. He didn't look to defend. He, he kept on trading blows and, and trying to, you know, hurt and Ernesto back. That's really dangerous sometimes, especially when you're fighting a guy like Ernesto Host, because Host, Host is just really technical. Once he hurt him with that clean counter, he just capitalized and he, he had good eyes. He was seeing everything that LeBanner was throwing back. So he was able to, to capitalize and, and end the fight with a big knockout. And props to LeBanner, you know, has always been a beast. Uh, every single fight, he goes in there and, and, and brings trouble to his opponents. You, you see this fight. First round, he went in there and beat Ernesto Hust and had the first round, had a really dominant round. And then Ernesto, with his technique, with his skill, was able to, you know, to find the distance, find the timing, find the counterattack, and get a big knockout win. And one more K1 title. You know, uh, Ernesto Hust has four... K1 World Championships, and he has that for a reason, you know, really, really skilled guy. Look at that. Once he finds that shot, he just keeps, keeps on connecting. 
Laban is trying to throw blows and, and maybe find a counter, find something, but it's just overwhelming and that's it. Fight over. Ernesto Host is the champion. And yeah, man, uh, I'm a big fan of kickboxing. I'm a big fan of K1. I've always uh, enjoyed this so much. And I, I, I don't know, these fights just get me excited. You know, I feel like fighting right now. But yeah, hopefully one day, maybe after I retire MMA, I could, you know, have some fights, maybe a couple of fights uh, in kickboxing and have some fun. I, I would definitely enjoy that. So, yeah, that was Ernesto Host against Jerome LeBanner, K1 1999 final, and one of my favorite fights. I think, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And that's, that's what I'm going to do as well, you know, start watching different kind of fights, not only uh, my fights. We're going to keep on watching mine, kind of analyzing what I can improve and whatnot, but also watch some other fights, especially my favorite ones, you know. These are things that I was watching when I was a little kid, and growing up and and growing up into my fight career i learned a lot from this you know i studied a lot of video on these guys so this has it is a big influence on my style and the way i fight nowadays guys don't forget to subscribe to the channel share the video like the video that always helps you know uh me reach out to more people and and guys that can enjoy this content and let's keep on having fun keep on watching some cool fights let's go